things that I bought when I got into woodworking about a year ago was my K4 Craig Jig. You'll see it pop up all the time over YouTube, particularly if you're looking at channels that are focused on newbies and novices like Woodworking for Mere Mortals. And I absolutely love this thing. It gave me 12 months of service. There is still nothing wrong with it to this date, but it's been replaced. Because a little while ago, I won a competition by Craig Australia, and I was lucky enough to pick up a K5 Master System. And today, before I give away my K4 to a new home for someone else just starting out, I'm going to compare the two machines to let you know what the differences between them are, and also take a quick sneak peek at what the difference between a standard set and a master set is too, in terms of what you get for your extra money. In your master kit, you're going to get a few additions that are going to make your life easier with your Craig jig. The primary one being a clamp. And here is one of the kickers. If you get a K4 master system, you'll only get the standard manual 3-inch Craig face clamp. The K5 master system, you'll get the Automax. So automatically adjustable pressure, and those are a better clamp. I'd never buy any more of these. Not that they're not good, but these are just so much better and not that much more expensive. So clamp, number one. Number two is this portable block. Now, standard in your Craig kits, you get a little 19 mil spacer in order to do movable repairs. However, this little thing gives you the spacing options for various thicknesses of wood, and you can slip it in, set your depth, and move it around to do repairs that way. I haven't actually ever used this yet, and honestly, while it is a nice little toy, I don't know if many people would. And without it, the value of the master system doesn't really stack up. What I did, and for that exact reason, is that when I bought my K4, I got the base system, and I bought a face clamp. Those were the two things that I wanted, and it works out cheaper than the master. The only other thing that you get, and only with the K4, because it comes included with the K5, is a little spacer. So this one is standard, we'll look at that in a second. On the K4, you get one, it's a stop that you can basically attach to the side of it and give you repeatable distances for your pocket holes. Again, a nice little addition, but they do charge you for it. So with the K4 Master, I'm not sure if I'd bother. K5 Master, again, I'd probably just buy myself another clamp instead. One thing to watch out for though is I get a bit of mixed information. I think the older K4s didn't come with the dust extraction as standard, but the ones from Carpetech these days do, and you definitely want the dust extraction port. I think that used to be a master addition, but now it does come standard. So that's a summary of the master clamp, guide block, little step toy, $70 extra here, $60 extra here because it doesn't have the stepper. Honestly, mm, don't know if I'd bother. Base system, buy yourself a clamp, happy days. Right, well what is the same between them that you get out of the box? You're going to get your Allen key for adjusting the stop collar on the drill bit, and of course those are identical too. Your driver is identical, and as we previously mentioned, that little spacer block for movable repairs is identical. And the blocks that you get for driving your holes are identical. These are of course the metric ones. So that's what's the same. Let's see what is different. And the most glaringly obvious one is the way in which these things clamp. That's where you're getting all your value for money in terms of speed, in terms of a bit of power and the efficiency you're going to be able to work with these. Mostly it's all to do with how you secure your wood to your Craig jig. On here, of course, you would be working from this side, which means you have to reach around your wood in order to clamp it down. And that is usually going to be pretty easy unless you're working with wide boards. On the K4, when you want to clamp something down this way, you can reach around quite easily. But imagine if you had a larger sheet, trying to get around here and clamp is going to be a bit tricky. And simply from a workflow point of view, that is not quite as an efficient way of doing it as is having a back mounted clamp. Also, the way that this adjusts is a bit more manual. You've got to screw around things, you've got to match them up. And I have found that this isn't the tightest thing and often you will have to keep readjusting it as it sort of shakes itself loose with the vibration of using the machine. Therefore, 
The biggest advantage that you're going to get with the K5 is a clamp that is pointed towards you and one that has a ratcheting clamp system which is much more easy to adjust, probably a bit more powerful and I have not had move on me just yet. This is the primary difference and it is a big one. Doesn't look like much, but I can guarantee you if you were drilling out a hundred or so pocket holes on a project, the amount of time and stability that this ratcheting system gives you in order to clamp your wood down is really, really worth it. While we've got this angle, one more small difference. This has a lovely, nice swiveling dust extraction port, which can be handy as opposed to the K4 where it is locked standard in place. I will also point out that neither the K5 nor the K4 fits my standard vacuum hose, and I had to use an adapter in order for that to work. So slightly more convenient dust extraction. While these two blocks may be exactly the same, the way they connect to your jig is slightly different and the K5 has a lovely improvement. It is a quick release system so that you can just use your fingers and very quickly shift between different thicknesses of timber. Whereas this one has a thumb screw, you have to loosen it and then tighten it back in. Again, it's only a small improvement, but that's what improvements are all about making things slightly faster, slightly easier. And this one is actually stopped. Whereas this one, you can put in the wrong place if you're not careful and thread it poorly, which eventually may wear out over time. Lovely little small improvement there. This improvement is one that I well added, but Craig takes into consideration with the K5. Again, when you're doing narrow pieces of wood, the supply base is sufficient to hold something like that nice and stable when you are trying to get your holes in. However, when you start working with wider pieces of wood like this, if you didn't have these wings on, it would rock and that wasn't ideal. I ran into that problem pretty early on and of course the very simple solution is to glue or screw your own wings onto a board the K5 comes with those and they are plenty long enough. Though if you really, really wanted to, you could get even longer wings or build your own. So this is another really great addition for the stepped up model. A handy feature of those wings on the K5 too is storage. So when you're not using your bits and all your other pieces, there is plenty of space to shove them. You can put screws in there, you can put pocket hole plugs, whatever you want and they are quite tight. I hang this on the wall, obviously, and I've never had anything fall out, so that is handy. Underneath this wing here, you even got a sticker which came with the kit that gives you the quick reference for thicknesses and screw length, which is very handy too, because I never remember what length screw I am supposed to be using in what situation. So these really, really good. Speaking of bases, you may notice that both of my jigs, this one a little bit nicer is, when I got it, I wanted to make it pretty, I have screwed down using the supplied holes on both of the models to a piece of plywood. Usually you would just clamp this down to the bench, that's why they give you the face clamp really in the master kit, but this is a much much better solution. It gives you a lot more freedom, area to play with regardless of which system you get, then having it like this is fantastic. The K5, I've even put a cleat so I can hang it up on my wall out of the way and it stays safely stored in between uses. Plus, you know, you get to put the wings on the K4. So I highly recommend screwing down your base to a lovely little system such as this. So previously we saw that setting the thickness of wood you want to work with is easier on the K5, but it is also much easier to set the collar depth for your drill bit. On the K4, You've got these lovely markings here, and it is a very clever little system where if I want 19 mil, then I can set it to there, tighten that down with a supplied Allen key, and away we go. And that is pretty much as accurate as you need to be, as long as you do it carefully. Not sure if you can see, but once I forgot to do this, and I ended up putting a hole in the K4, which was my stupidity, not Craig's. However, it does show there is some user error when you start doing stuff like this, and I have once not tightened that enough, again, use error, but it did slip, so something just to watch out there. K5 improves on this manual system by supplying you with a little step guide to set the collar depth on the drill bit. 
Very simply, you choose what screw length, and sadly it is only in Imperial, though for 19mm we're using the inch and a quarter screws. Plonk that down there, get your collar on the drill bit, and put it into the hole that is the inch and a quarter, tighten that up, and you're absolutely foolproof. Again, another lovely small improvement. Nothing wrong with this system, but that is a bit more accurate, a bit better. Also mentioned this earlier, which I don't have for the one for the K4, and I think my wings would actually interfere with its usage. It only comes with a master kit. Here, that's a little stop. So you can see on both sides, we have these keyholes, and you can fit this into them, lock it into place, and then turn the dual locking nuts to set your depth. And what that's going to do is give you a repeatable stop so that your pocket holes, if you are going to be that picky, are always going to be the same from each end. Haven't found use for it yet, because most of the things I build, I just hide the pocket holes, but if you're doing something where they were going to be on display or contrasted, and you want to make them look prettier, then that would be a nifty little toy too that comes with the K5. So there you have it. They are the primary differences and similarities between the K4 and the K5 Craig Jig, available at Carbotech and other retailers here in Australia. They are becoming more well-known. Total Tools, I think, now also have some of the Craig products too. So that's great. You get an increased availability to them. As of October 2019, apologies while I check my notes, the K4 is going for $149 Australian, and the K5 is going for $219. And as I mentioned previously, my recommendation if you're just getting started in this, don't really bother with the master system. It is nice, look, there's nothing wrong with it at all, and it is decent value, but I just don't think you really need to spend that money up front at least. You're going to grow your collection of Craig clamps and gear to go along with your pocket hole joinery as you get more experience. There are a lot of cool accessories out there. They aren't the cheapest, but they are very, very good quality, and you can get them one by one. As we said earlier, the master system for this is an extra $60. The master system for that is $70. Save your coin, get the base system, and you will have a really fun time starting to build stuff. I've only been at this for a year, but I've been absolutely in love with the Craig brand since before I even saw it. They really do look after the novice. They design their products with the person who does not know what they're doing in mind. Having said that, you can also achieve some really professional results with them too. So this is my current Craig lineup. I use it nearly every single project I do. If you'd like to see just what you can build using the Craig system of pocket hole joinery, clamps, and other cutting guides, then please do subscribe to my channel and check out some of the builds that I've done recently. I also have some setup videos which you may enjoy on how to use the square cut and the rip cut. Craig are a great brand. They're becoming more well known here in Australia. They're very popular in the US and you can go nuts spending money on them, but you don't have to. A few small tools gets a basic woodworker a great investment to start off their hobby, especially if you're like me and you don't have a table saw, don't have a band saw, don't have a drill press, but you like to make stuff, you can get around having those tools early on by a few clever jigs such as the ones made available. As you can see, I genuinely do really enjoy these tools, not sponsored in any way, shape or form, except perhaps being lucky enough to win this off the Craig social media. As we said, it is not the cheapest stuff around, and I'll fully admit that, but it is very good quality, and if you are like me, then they are going to make your life pretty easy. Thanks for watching today, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you around in the comments section if you've got any questions about any of these products, then hit me up. Catch you next time.